more saints. Uh, a lot of folks live and breathe. God is love. And that is 100% true. But God is a love that us, while we're walking in the flesh, will never understand what love means. Is when we start walking in the Spirit, is when we will start to understand what love is. And everything, we need to understand this. God is indeed love. And this is, I'm going to, this is a worldly teaching, so don't take it as a teaching. This is an incorrect speaking, so I'm going to give you an example of what the world teaches. If you truly hate someone, that means you would kill them and destroy their reputation if you could do so without repercussion. Not a very nice way to be in even the most extreme circumstances. In fact, hatred is something the Lord does, ne does not ever feel, and neither do angels. Okay. If you truly hate someone, that means you would kill them and destroy their reputation if you could do so without repercussion. In fact, hatred is something the Lord does not ever feel and neither do angels. Now this is taken from New Christianity Bible Study. I'm just going to go ahead and X that one out because I'm done reading that garbage. <laughs> now we're fixing to go to the Word of God. The first one we're going to do is, hey, everybody likes Proverbs, don't they? Oh yeah, man, Psalms and Proverbs, but more people like Proverbs than they do Psalms. Yeah, so let's go to Proverbs. And we all should know this one. Every saint should know this. And every saint should have an understanding of this. Not just have knowledge, but have an understanding of this. Because this is going to show you God is love. These six things doth the Lord hate. Ooh, wait a minute. Didn't that worldly message just say the Lord never feels hate? See what I mean? These six things does the Lord hate. Seven are an abomination unto him. One of them things that the Lord hates is a proud look. Why? Because a proud look stems from the heart. One of them next thing, one, one another thing that the Lord hates is a lying tongue. Why? Because a lying tongue stems from the heart. Another thing that the Lord hates is hands that shed innocent blood. Why? Because it comes from the heart. One more thing he hates. A heart that deceiveth wicked imaginations. Ooh, boy, tired of babble. Okay. Why? It stems from the heart. He also hates feet that be swift and run into mischief. Another thing he hates. <laughs> uh, one more thing he hates is a false witness that speaks lies. Now you would kind of figure that would be a lying tongue, wouldn't it? Separate things. Different defilements. Hey, the Lord hates that too. And one more thing in the last it says here of the things that the Lord hates. He that soweth discord among brethren. Now, in just this little portion alone, we see that that new Christianity today teaching, which is in a lot of places, is unsound doctrine. Oh, it's a doctrine, all right. It's a doctrine that's going to lead you to hell. <laughs> because you'll never understand or be able to love as God charges us to love until you understand how God loves. So let's look at this one portion here we spoke of. And we'll look at another thing that the world says. God hates to sin, but he don't hate the sinner. Okay, let's, let's, let's look at this. Uh, a proud look. 
do you think that the person that has a proud look God hates? Yeah, of course he hates the sin. He also hates the sinner. And we need to understand, before I go on any further, what hate is. Hate is not what the world says it is. Hate, by biblical definement, is a strong dislike for something or someone. That's what hate is. <coughs> the world says hate evil and wicked, yet God said he hates. So let's continue on here. He hates them hands that shed innocent blood. He hates the sinner. He hates he that soweth discord among brethren. He hates the sinner. He hates those feet that be swift and running into mischief. He hates the sinner. Okay, so we can go on, and, and I'm going to X that one out. That's Proverbs. Uh, if you want to go, you should know this one. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. And we're going to cross that one out. And we're going to go to, ooh, man, we're going <laughs> to, uh, oh, oh, it, ooh, this in here, Ecclesiastes. Now, that is spelled E-C-C-L-E-S-I-A-S-T-E-S. -E -E now, there's two books. There's one in the Bible, and there's one in what's called the Acrophilia. It was in the original King James Bible for all you only King James Bible people that ignore the Acrophilia because you it's not in your King James Bible. But it was in the original one, so if you're really a King James Bible cult person, then you will have you will go by these books also. But we'll just go here. Uh, e C C L E S I A S T E S. However you say that, the three eight is what man calls it. Uh, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Man, hey, this guy. This is God's word. There is a time to love, and a time to hate, and a time to war, and a time to peace. Now, we need to be careful on bringing this into the worldly conception of a time to love. Because to the world, a time to love is after we've knocked back a couple of shots and we've been bar dancing all night and we go to the house and we're not married and we're in fornication. That's what the world says. It's a time for love and a time to hate. Well, the world said we ain't supposed to hate, but you know they display a heck of a lot of it for people who say that hate is bad. A time of war. Now, back then, there was some times of war. But see, now we don't have, really, a saint should never shed blood, period. Period. We're not to return evil for evil in word nor deed. No word scripture is a saint of the new covenant told that it's okay at any time to shed blood or kill someone. So what is this time for war? See, now we have spiritual war. Remember the other day, you talked about the armor of God? Okay, and a time for peace. And that, brought into the New Covenant, is all the time. We all should be seeking peace. So, we need to be careful when we read these scriptures and we look at them in a worldly definition and understand God's usage when we bring this into the New Covenant after the cross. We got to be careful like that because there's a lot of people out there that say it's okay for what we're doing in, in all these wars and all these countries. And, hey, man, if you looked at the Crusades, them people wearing that cross on their shirt and their battle shield was just slaughtering people left and right, all in the name of God. Oh, man. Hey, if you want to watch a good movie, it's called Kingdom of Heaven. You'll see a little bit of this right here. In a, in the, it's called The Kingdom of Heaven. Excellent movie based on the crusade period of times when they had the kings and the, whatever that guy that wrote, wore all that holy clothing. And, and in the movie, he says this. Now, let's convert to Islam or we'll repent later. Ain't that the way the world is? 
we can come back because his mom was coming at him, but they was coming at him hard and heavy, and they was looking like they could get their honey kick. And he told everybody in the castle ground, let's convert to Islam, surrender, convert to Islam. We can always repent later. That's the way the world is. If you want to watch a good movie, it's called The Kingdom of Heaven. Really good movie. All right. Now let's go to, where am I at here? Uh, let's go to another old again. Psalms, Psalms 139, 21 to 22. Now, this is an interesting portion of God's Word. Psalms 139, 21 to 22. Do I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? Do, oh, excuse me. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. And I count them mine enemies. Now, see, we got to remember, back in this time, anybody who was not a flesh and blood Israelite was the enemy. Okay? You got to remember that. Also, there was people that was, that was in Israel uh, that were Israelites coming against other Israelites. We know that because of this here. Okay. So we bring this into the book code. Now, can we apply this? Let's look at, uh, oh boy, I messed up and said that word I heard. People I don't like, I hate the word apply. Excuse me, and I apologize for that. That's one of them words that slip out of every now and then. Because I hear it so much from me. Ugh. Okay. So let's look at this and bring this into the new covenant. Do I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? Are we to hate them that hate the Lord? Can we? Because remember, hate's just dislike. It's not what the world says. It's, it's God's biblical defilement that we need to understand. And, and God hates. It's okay to hate saints as long as it's, I like this down here. I hate them with perfect hatred. That's an interesting uh, word right there. Perfect hatred. Think about that for a minute. I count them mine enemies. Now, can we have enemies in the new covenant? Absolutely. I think it's in Romans where Paul says this. Although they are the enemy of the gospel, they're the blood of the Lord. Man, he's natural right here today. Also, Paul says, do not admonish him. Oh, oh, don't count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Because, you know, we can't admonish the enemy. First Corinthians 5 is clear. God judges those that are, are out of the house of God, not us. I can't even admonish. I can't even correct an unbeliever. Now, if they tell me they're a saint, if they tell me they're a believer, now nah, then the game's on. But I admonished him like a brother. So, am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? Well, again, 1 Corinthians 5, put that wicked person out from among you. That's love. The world would call that hate. But that's loving that brother. And not just loving that brother that's in that fornication or whatever them other ones that they say. Because it ain't just fornication. It's, it's all transgressional sin. This is just something Paul heard about. That's why it was addressed. So, not just for that one. Paul was, he wasn't liking a whole lot what was going on in the congregation, i.e., he disliked what was going on in the congregation, i.e., <laughs> he hated what was going on in the congregation. So he told him to put that person out and get that feast of unleavened bread back into the assembly. Now, speaking of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, let's go to Amos. Amos 5.21. And I'm just going to say that one thing. I hate, uh, uh, 5.21, I hate that God, the Lord, whoever you want to put in there to make you feel comfortable. Because it's both of them in actuality. I hate, I despise your feast days. 
that's them feast days, and he told them to observe. Your feast days. He didn't say, I despise my feast days. I hate my feast days. He says, I hate, I despise your feast days. More brother. Your feast days. Not not one that the Lord told them to observe and partake in. He hates theirs. And I will not smell in your solemn assembly. Now, brother, that's a deep one out there. A solemn assembly is not a special assembly. An assembly is when the saints gather. And I got news for you. Right now, the Lord ain't smelling many of these building assemblies down here. Oh, he might smell something. It's called stench. But he is not pleased with the aroma of worship. I will not smell in your solemn assembly. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept. What you think? You think that's you think God's changed his attitude on this type of person now that we're under the new covenant? No. The new covenant is all the new covenant is this. What was God's law that can never be done is still God's law, but we can do it through his grace. That's what the difference. That's why it's here. Old covenant, new covenant, but on the new covenant you got that word better. And the better part is, he sent us the comforter. He came to abide within us. Whereas in the old, the Lord, would, the Spirit would come on somebody and they could leave. They would come on somebody and they could leave. The new one, he comes on, he takes up residency <laughs> until the day of redemption. They knew him better. So, uh, though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beast. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the medley of thy vows, but let judgment run down with water and righteousness as a mighty stream. You know, that right there should be uh, uh, on a card and giving out to every saint and tell them, hey, if you don't understand this, I, I, I fear that you really don't know God in the way you should know him. You think people like this are them ones that, that the Lord's going to say, I never knew you, but we did, but we did, but we did this for you. I never knew you. Oh, you did a lot of stuff for me, but I never knew you. Seems a big difference. That most of us talk. So, uh, let's get out of Amos. Uh, but once again, uh, whew, boy, man, Amos is a, is a tough one, ain't it? Okay, uh, let's go to, uh, uh, oh, hey, Jude. <laughs> Jude, what they call one, <coughs> only three. We're going to start in 20. But ye, beloved, that's the saints. Jude is not talking to Israelites. and calling them beloved. Jude is talking to saints. The saints are the beloved. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves in the most holy faith. See, there you go, saints. Praying in the Holy Ghost. See, saints. I like the Holy Spirit, but man, we'll go with the Ghost. Uh, keep yourselves in the love of God. Wow, keep yourself. You mean I can... Leave the love of God? Oh, yeah, you can. The Lord is clear on that. Uh, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ as so we can know the one true God. And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others say with fear, pulling out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Mm. Okay, the explanation of this. And some have compassion, making a difference. In other words, I, that elder, this is this is an elder, one that understands, one that is mature enough to make a difference, which means. I look at this saint that's doing this transgressional sin, and I look at this saint doing the same transgressional sin. 
Okay, example. Babe in crime. Just converted in fornication. I need to go to him with compassion. Because he, he he's he still don't he's still he's still a babe. It's compassion. Okay. Somebody that's been in a men uh, uh, uh saying they say for ten years, fifteen, five, whatever, living in fornication. Now, I go with them with fire. I go with them with fire. See, there's a difference. Same transgressional sin committed by two different saints. I approach one with a compassion heart, and I approach one with fire. In other words, I get knee deep in him. And if you well, if you don't agree with the knee deep thing, I suggest you go see what Paul said about the Corinthians. And what the Lord did at the temple. No. Okay, we're going to end this one on Revelations. Brothers and sisters, we need to understand a lot of us don't want Revelation is. Revelation was what the Lord did not know, had privy to, if you want to call it that, had privilege of knowing yet while he walked here on this earth in the flesh. It was some things that he was not privy to yet. Revelation is clear. It was a revelation given unto the Lord Jesus Christ by God. And then, and then the Lord gave it to us. So, did the Lord not know everything while he walked on earth? Well, he said he did. No one knows the time but my father. And guess what the father did? He gave him his revelation, and he gave it to us. So now we kind of do know the time. We do know the parable of the fig tree. In other words, what will be seen around us before that he comes as a thief in the night, unexpected to a bunch of us. But for those ever watchful, <laughs> okay, well, Revelation, what they call 2, uh, 6 to 15. But this thou hast, thou, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. You know what God hates? Bad doctrine. Yeah, because see, the deeds are the fruit of bad doctrine, or the deeds are a fruit of sound doctrine. Now that works. Okay, so he hates the deeds, yeah. He hates the doctrine. He hates the deeds. He hates the doctrine. Okay. Uh, and y'all can read all this and go through, but I'm going to go on down to the, to the last one. Uh, what they call the fifteen. So vast, so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Okay, so uh, I'm going to close out all that stuff right there. Okay, we're done with the readings and stuff, so now I'm just going to speak. The, that perfect hate. You know, it says there's a perfect love and there's a perfect hate. And both of them are the same. Yeah, both of them are the same. To say that 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 God is love and God never hates is is uh, is an unsound doctrine. It's it's a doctrine that will lead you to hell, because you'll never really truly understand that God hates the sinner. It's not just the sin. Look, the sin ain't going to the hell, and the sin ain't going to end up in the lake of fire. The sinner is going to go to hell, and the sinner is going to end up in the lake of fire. Okay, yes, God does. And see, that's the other day we were speaking, and I said, you know, they'll speak the truth. They'll twist it just a little bit. It's still the truth in a manner, but it's twisted for deceptive usage. 
God loves the sinner, but hates to sin. See? First part, a lie. Second part, the truth. Put them together, it sounds good. It does. But the full truth is this. Although God is love, you, want, you cannot have love without hate. And you really cannot have that perfect hatred without perfect love. So today, the world says hate is evil. Hate is wicked. You heard me read that teaching from a, a Christian church, whatever it was called. It said the Lord never hates. And scripture is clear. Well, you read a lot of it before, before the cross. Yeah, but it was after the cross where the Lord says, I hate. I watched that one that everybody knows. Esau have I hated. So we need to understand that if we never dislike, and that's simply what hatred is for something. It's a dislike for something. Had somebody say the other day, man, every time I watch fornication, I just hate it. And the truth is, I, everybody else was saying, ooh, I'm praying for you, and I told them the truth. No, you don't. No, you don't hate watching it. If you hated watching it, you wouldn't watch it. It's that simple. You don't hate it. Oh, in your mind, what the world has taught you, you might think you hate it. But you're not. If you hated it, you wouldn't watch it. Do you know what I have to do if, if, it is, if I want a pornography? Well, it used to be growing up, you know, you had to go down to the store back. Uh, or go borrow a buddy's book. Steal one from his daddy or something. And today, I have to do something. I have to get on my computer. First, I have to turn it on. Then I have to wait for the search engine to come up. And then I have to type in the words. And then I have to push in. And then it'll bring up a whole bunch of different uh, whatever you're looking for. Then I had to go through them and choose the one I want. And I choose one, and I'm looking at it, and I say, you know, that don't fit my taste. So I go choose another one. Man, that's really still not what I want to see or watch. So I go choose another one. Do you really hate it? Oh, come on, brothers and sisters, stop lying to yourselves. You know something? That's an extreme picture. But as well, I got people say, well, uh, oh, I hate gossip. And you know something? You'll catch them gossiping about something. They hate it when somebody gossips about them. <laughs> I mean, but, but they don't see it as gossip when they're talking about somebody else. I hate lying. Well, they stop it. Stop it. Do you know more know how to stop it? Just read the Bible and tell you. Or call me up and I'll tell you. You know what the main thing is? This is the key to everything, brothers and sisters. This is the key to everything. If we say that we hate whatever we're doing, it's transgression of sin. And, and, we, and, we, and we truly hate it. It just, when I, it just, oh man, I feel so... You know what you do? One thing. It's one thing. And it, it's followed by another one. And then it's followed by something else. Okay, it's called submit to God. Resist the devil. If you do that, you can't say, well, the devil made me do it. The devil came and attacked me. Okay? Submit to God. And in submitting to God, you're resisting the devil. If you don't submit to God, if you just go straight to number two and try to do it on your own, resist the devil, you're fixing to get your butt headed to you. Submit to God. In that, 
you're back, you're armored up to resist the devil. Remember the armor we talked about the other day? Submit to God. You get armored up, resist the devil. What happens? What happens? The devil flees. When are y'all going to get tired of getting your butts handed to you by the devil and being at him and pointing fingers to well, God? It was that woman you gave me. He blamed the woman and he blamed God. And then the woman turned around and said, well, the devil made me do it. When are y'all going to stop and get out of this endemic nature and understand this? If you want to be an overcomer because the Lord promises wonderful, glorious blessings, for those that have a heart of overcomer. A heart of an overcomer. Does that mean that we've overcome everything yet? No. Brothers and sisters, to my last breath, I'm going to be an overcomer. I'll be overcoming something. Mainly flesh. <laughs> and that Paul overcame. To the, he overcame. He, but it's the heart of an overcomer. Okay. So we submit to God. In that, we're not resisting the devil. We submit to God, we get armored up, and that we're resisting the devil. Don't try to resist him on your own. And in that, the devil flees. The devil flees. So, hatred. I got off sidetracked on that for a minute. Hatred. Is it a saint's duty to hate not just their sin. See, now this is, this is going to be a good one for you. You might like this. Not just their sin. Is it okay for a saint to hate, dislike, another saint and sin. Is it okay to do that? Because the world will tell you no. You're bigoted, you're holier than thou, yada, yada, yada. Paul said, put away from you that wicked person. Now, and then Paul told the, the assembly, they need to get they saved right with God. Or I'm fixing to come down there and get you. So, you know something? Nowadays, what Paul told the Corinthians will be considered hate speech. You really think about it. Uh, so, hatred. To understand that perfect hatred spoken of in the Word of God. We, we need to understand perfect love. You cannot have one without the other. If God was just all love, He wouldn't be righteous. That's just it. He wouldn't be holy. God is love. But God hates. And brothers and sisters, it's okay for us to hate. But the thing is, we better be hating right. We better understand what hate is. And we better judge ourselves before we do so. So, hey, I'm always praying for you. You know them things needful. Second Peter 1, go there and read them out. Add to your faith, brother and sister, so you'll have an interest guaranteed into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to see you there. I want to be there myself. Uh, and I love y'all. See you next time around.